So in this video, uh, I'm going to focus on Criterion B the, of the MYP uh, design curriculum and guide you through some steps of how to get maximum marks for Criterion B. And I'll be focusing on each strand. So the first strand is strand one, and it talks about uh, that you need to develop detailed design specifications, which explain the success criteria for the design of a solution based on the analysis of research. So first thing to do is brainstorm, come up with a big list of design specifications. Then, so this could be done, you could do this like at a table. So on the, on the left side, you'll have the list of design specifications. Next to that, you need to explain in greater detail what each design specification actually is. Um, now you also need to justify it. So persuade the reader persuade uh, the person marking that these design specifications are actually, each one is very important. So uh, identify the design specification, explain what it is and justify its importance. Uh, and there's a couple of ways you can justify the importance. One of the easiest uh, and most accessible ways is by research. So if you have a certain specification explain what it is and then link it to some kind of research. So just do some online research, find the URL that links and relates to it, and then insert that in. Then that is convincing that you've done some research and that it is indeed very important. Uh, the next thing is on the next column, you need to then work out a way how you're actually gonna judge that design specification. So identify the design specification, explain what it is, link it to research, and then tell, tell the reader how you're actually going to uh, measure it. Now you could measure it a number of ways. First of all, could be uh, with some measuring devices, and I'm talking about weight, height, width, whatever it might be. Um, or you might be measuring it by getting somebody to judge it. So maybe a teacher, maybe the client will be uh, looking at your product and giving you some detailed feedback. Um, that, so they can give de detailed feedback or they can give it a pass fail rating or they could give it a, a rating out of five. So one is poor all the way up to five, which is excellent. So how well did you meet the de design specification? Uh, it can be judged in a number of ways. One of the uh, one thing I would recommend that is um, keep this testing method quite simple. So uh, if you've just got like measuring it with a pass or a fail, or you're measuring it on, on by a rate with a rating out of five, this will later on produce nice, easy to read data. So if you go through your design specifications and you tally up all the different scores, you can present this in a nice graph, which comes up later, um, which will be addressed later in other other strands, Criterion C and even D actually, the more, more so with Criterion D. So that's the main thing um, to do with the design specification for strand one. Now, once you've got your list of design specifications, we are going to be using these in a lot of different strands, a lot of different criteria. So you're going to be, you want to need a nice, easy to read table so you can actually copy and paste it later on in your, in your different uh, assessment uh, task documentation. Um, now, if you're, uh, this is a the way to present this information. I've mentioned a table. It could also be uh, presented like as bullet points, uh, but you're not writing lots of like a paragraphs. This is a table or a chart that uh, that is easy to, to read and easy to copy and paste and be used over and over again uh, throughout the project. Now, if you're struggling and not sure what how to actually identify the, uh, and come up with a list of design specifications, then there's something that's very easy to follow, which is Access FM. So if you go to Google and type in Access F FM, uh, each letter A, A, C, C, E, S, they all stand for a certain word. So if, uh, a certain word. So for example, the A is the aesthetics. So if your first design speci specification is on the aesthetics, what is your product going to look like? It, and so you describe what, uh, how your, your finished product will actually look, uh, the aesthetics, and how you can measure that it's actually meeting that aesthetic uh, design specification. Then you can move on to the next one, is, which is cost. Now for a lot of uh, 
uh, uh, school projects, this might not be appropriate. So you don't have to use cost if you don't need to. But if it is a factor, then yes, include cost. So again, this Access FM it is, is a guide. You don't have to use it. But if you're struggling for ideas, type in Access FM into Google, look at what each letter, letter means and try and address that in your design specifications. Uh, Access FM is also used quite a lot in IGCSE in design and design and technology. So it's kind of a well-known um, design specification tool, Access FM. So if you become familiar with that, uh, that would be wise. Okay, once you've got your design specification, we then move on to strand two. Now strand two says develops a range of feasible design ideas using an appropriate me mediums and detailed annotations which can be correctly interpreted by others. Okay, so for here, this is where you're generating ideas. So initially, when you, can, when you, when you start generating ideas, quite often you're not quite sure what the end product's gonna look like. So at the start of this uh, strand two uh, uh, section, you'll probably have little ideas. You can have notes, you can have pictures, you can have stick figures, you can have squiggles, you can have doodles, all sorts of things. So you're just filling up like getting some ideas and concepts. So the first, the first stage of this, they're not really well developed ideas. Uh, so after you've done this, this kind of like scratch pad notes and, and sketches of different ideas, then you start to uh, dig deeper and develop your better ideas. Now for top marks here, you need to, it says here, you need a range of feasible ideas. So once you've, once you've moved beyond the initials, like sketching and doodling, kind of scratching ideas out, we need to develop a range of ideas. Now, the definition of a range, so if, you, if I have something like a range of watches, how many watches do you uh, think that I own? So this is the kind of word that we are using, a range of ideas. So in my mind, I'm thinking somewhere between three and six is a range, or it could be four and 10 is a range. Uh, so you need a range of ideas. So develop some of your better ideas and sketch them out. Now the sketches or, or the ideas or the drawings need to be able to re read and understood by somebody else. So if somebody else looks at your idea, so idea number one, they look at it and it makes sense to them. So and an easier way to make sure this happens, just pretend whoever's reading it is not that clever. So you gotta make it obvious. This is a cake. This is a hat design. This is a uniform design. This is a design of a new library. This is a musical design. Whatever it is, be really clear and obvious so somebody else can understand it. Um, now, the other thing for you to get top marks, the, the idea needs to be understood by somebody else and it needs to be annotated. So annotate uh, your sketches and your drawings and your ideas. So lots and lots of words. I would think for you to get top marks, so let me rephrase, an easy, one, an easy trap to fall in is just to do drawings and drawings and drawings and neglect the annotation. You can't get top marks if you don't have the annotation. So spend uh, maybe uh, two thirds of your time on the drawing and a third on the annotation. So make sure you spend time annotating so that you can get top marks. So let, let me recap. So first of all, you're gonna have lots of squiggles and, and drawings for your initial ideas. Then you're gonna develop some ideas uh, much in much more detail in greater depth. So, and that you need a range of, of ideas. So what these actual ideas look like, now it says here, um, uh, uh, appropriate medium or medium. So it could be a variety. So you might draw a picture, you might do a flow chart, you might do a, an isometric drawing, you might do a, a, a storyboard, so any kind of way to represent your idea is, uh, is, is good because you do it using a variety of mediums. Now, another, another point about the annotation, if, when you're annotating your drawing, you can return back to that Access FM. So each one, if you, you could e easily address each, each of the, the letters in Access FM in the way you annotate. So for example, size. How big is it? So you put your measurement down. Um, also, you could do something like the aesthetics. Describe the aesthetics. So use Access FM to annotate. It's a, it's a very easy way um, and it connects you with the strand prior to that. So for annotating, for you to make sure you get maximum marks, 
if you can go explain your annotations a little bit. So for example, if we were to describe the size, so if you're making a website and it's a, a particular uh, size, or you're making a, a movie and it's a particular length. So if you say the movie, the short movie will be two minutes, between two and three minutes long, this is a good annotation, but an excellent annotation will be, you'll add the word because. It'll be two to three minutes long because that is the length of the sound, the soundtrack that will be that will be accompanying the movie. So annotate with some detail and then put a because and then you'll be able to, and then you can get top marks for that. Okay, the strand three, for strand three, it says here, present the chosen design and justify fully and critically its selection with detailed rest reference to design specifications. Okay, so last strand, strand two, you, can, you developed a range of ideas. Now from that range of ideas, you need to identify the best idea. Now you can do this on your own, but it's a, it's a better method is if you get some friends to help you, or even a better method if you get the target audience or the client to look at your design ideas and together in through consultation, together you decide on which is the very best one. So for this strand, you need to then present this new idea. Now presenting is, it may mean, because you've had the consultation with your client and got feedback from friends, you might need to develop, uh, redraw it or, or outline it in greater detail. So this is not just a design idea, this is now you're developing your best idea. So you need to present this best idea. Um, now, whichever method works best for presenting this idea is what you need in this strand. So you present the idea, this is the very best idea, but for you to get top marks, you also need to justify. So the easiest way to justify this is copy and paste your design specifications list from strand one, stick it into strand three. And so for each design specification, you justify. So if the first uh, design speci specification is aesthetic, the aesthetic should be have a natural earthy feel. You could say, okay, the aesthetic of my best design has an aesthetic, has an earthy and natural feel because it's green and it uses uh, colors of brown. Therefore, it meets this design specification. So you go, could go through one by one with the design specification, telling, telling the reader how that design specification is met with your very best design. Now, when it comes to justifying, this is a, another way to describe this is persuading. So you need to persuade the reader that that design that you've created or you've chosen is the very best one. Now, there's many ways you can persuade somebody. Uh, one of them is with opinions. So you could, if you could get a quote, for example, from your client or a target audience, and a quote says, this is the best design because of these reasons, this is very persuasive. And it actually shows that you're tying in your target audience or your client or feedback from friends. So you're justifying by getting some other, someone else to give you some input. Uh, you can also justify with statistics. So if you had four or five different designs and you ask all your classmates to uh, vote on the best one, you could then produce this data and say, well, this design number three got 15 votes, therefore it is the best one. So you need to somehow persuade the reader that your, just, your choice of the best design uh, is justified. Um, now, so there's two things, just to re re reiterate, for strand three, you need to present the best idea and then you need to justify the best idea. You, you must have both of those elements for you to get top marks. Now for strand four, strand four says develops accurate and detailed planning drawings, diagrams and outlines requirements for the creation of a solution. So you've decided upon your very best idea. Now we move into this next strand, strand four, and then we need to uh, basically explain it or in much, much greater detail. So therefore, for top marks here, it says that you need the accurate and detailed planning drawings. So therefore, whatever your best idea, we need drawings. Now, drawings has an S on the end, so you need more than one. You need several drawings. So it could be a drawing or a diagram of the overall product or it, and or it can be elements of of your in your best product. So you can focus in on different elements and sketch it out. This then focus on another element and create a drawing for that. So for this section, strand four, these these you need several drawings and they need to be accurate. Um, 
Uh, now, it also talks about outlining a requirement. Now, outline is words. So you need an outline. There's the difference between listing things and then outlining them. So a list is as a starting point. <clears throat> so you might list some of the things that your end product needs. So if you're you're baking a cake, it, it needs to be it needs to use flour. We'll need an oven. But for you to outline, you need to go into greater detail. You you will need flour. What type of flour do you actually need? Uh, if you need an, an oven what kind of temperature range or what kind of time will it be in the oven and what type of oven. So this is going from a list of things to an outline of things. So just to reiterate, strand four, you need lots of drawings, detailed and accurate drawings, and you need an outline, which is a, which is a list of words. Uh, yeah, and you need an outline, so that's words. So drawings and words for this strand four, for this last component. So uh, good luck, I hope you get Eight out of eight for strand B.